Hey everyone, welcome to a short video series on the first person body and body awareness features uh, that have recently been added to Neo FPS. In this video, we're going to be looking at the split rig character. Uh, so, a split rig is essentially simply a system where you have the weapon and the character arms separated out. So, the arms are on the body of the character uh, and the weapon is a separate object entirely. Now, for this, I don't have a demo built into Neo FPS, so we are using HQ FPS uh, weapons by Polymine Games. So this is a pretty awesome asset. It's, uh, it's quite popular as well. Uh, and it's up until now been a bit of a problem to actually use these weapons and things like that with Neo FPS because this feature set didn't exist. Uh, whereas now, you can get all of this working. So, so I'm not going to run through the actual setup and how to take their weapons and convert them into Neo FPS weapons. It's the same as any other weapon. The only fiddly bit is just getting your aim kind of uh, proxy objects lined up so they look down the sights. But apart from that, everything else is the same, except for the uh, animation override and the separating the hands out, whatever, that we're going to be going through now. So why would you want to use this split rig? Well, the most obvious one. So here we have my set of animations. Everything is looking as though it is like a weapon with arms built in. But if we head on to this character in the scene here, and we look at, is this it? The arms root, that's the one. Then one thing that we can do is we can disable the, uh, the arms and we can switch out to a different one. And if I swap weapons, you can see they're both using the same set of arms. And so, there we go. Now, how do we make this happen? So first up, let's have a look at the character itself. So standard new FPS character, as we mentioned in the legs and torso video previously, uh, we need this your object here. Uh, anything with animations that's built into the character or that we want to appear in the character viewport, we want to make sure that we have a your transform setup that's separate to the aim your that we use here. If we take a look at the root quickly and we look at the aim controller, I think the feature demo characters all just use a your transform and don't have a separate aim your. In fact, they actually use upper body transform in that setting there and nothing here. Now, at runtime, what that actually does is that actually copies the value across if this one's empty. But having them separate means that we have an object that's, that's parented to the root of the character that rotates with the mouse with the aim uh, in runtime. Uh, since we do the character movement uh, and the character physics rotation in a fixed time step, uh, the root will actually move separately to this your transform or rotate separately to this your transform, uh, which means that as you look left and right with the mouse, it's nice and smooth, but then anything that's parented to the root will jitter over this 50 frames per second physics time step. So instead, we have this your transform here. This will be rotated smoothly with the mouse and we parent anything to that. So underneath here, we have a transform called arms root. And then as a child of that, we have the actual arms themselves. So this is just using the model for the arms that comes with HQFPS directly. I'm not using their prefabs. I'm just using the model FBX itself that's just dragged straight in. So it has all the different animations and stuff attached to it. And the reason that it's under a separate object, uh, as opposed to just directly under here, is because the animation includes the root object. So if we wanted to move this around, uh, then the animation will just override any positioning we do each frame um, and mess with it. So instead, uh, we're gonna move around this object and you can see it's just placed at zero, zero, zero. So this will essentially move the whole thing as one. Uh, the reason that we want to do that is we want to sync the arm position and rotation uh, of the root up to the weapon. So as the weapon moves around with its spring animations for recoil or your leaning or things like that, we want the arms to move with. Let's look at the root of this here. So we have the animator component. So 
Uh, one of the key things here is culling mode. We want to make sure it's set to always animate. Otherwise, as soon as the hands actually go out of the frame of the camera, they will stop animating, which if we wanted to parent anything to it or anything like that could be a bit of a problem. Uh, I think actually it's fine in this situation, but I keep that set anyway. It's first person, so you always want it to be going. It's not a big deal. The animator controller, uh, we'll take a look at in a, in a minute. This is a slightly modified version of the one that comes with HQFBS. Uh, I've just simplified it down a bit, removed a couple of things. And then the other components on this object here, we have first person character arms. So this can handle the arm IK. So in the full body character, for example, this handled the matching the hand positions of the character to the weapon. Uh, in this case, all that this is doing is positioning this arm's root object, which is the root object here, like I said, to match the weapon that your character has selected. To track which weapon it is that your character has selected, we also have this component here, which is First Person Character Inventory Watcher. Uh, so that just detects selection change events, uh, checks for the wieldable kinematics component on it, then applies that to the arms here so that it knows what to match this to. So let's have a quick look at the animator controller. So this is fairly similar to a lot of the Neo FPS demo weapons, uh, just making a use of a few subgraphs here just to simplify some things. So we have the entry to the equip state, and then any state also connects into that. Any state equips into unequip as well. Um, so these are just equip and equip, so on and so forth. Uh, equip goes straight into idle when it finishes, so has a good time, uh, no conditions required. Uh, idle, so the main reason that we have a substate machine here, so the idle animation in the assault rifle, for example, actually has a fair bit of wobble and movement. So if you were to aim down sights, uh, it might be quite hard to line uh, the iron sights up to your target. So instead, it also has this hold animation, which is very, very similar to this. It just has a lot less movement. Um, so that's the idle. The firing, if we go in here, we have any state uh, going across to fire or to aim fire. So if we look at the transitions, we have the fire condition. So that's parameter here, fire trigger. And we have this aiming false. So this is a Boolean parameter called aiming. So aiming true fire trigger. So that goes into these, the fire and the aim fire. Uh, similar situation, this isn't raised up to, uh, to the camera or anything like that. This is just a firing animation that has less kind of overall movement so that it's easier to kind of recover your aim once it's done. Then on completion, both of these has exit time, transition out to idle. So up to the base layer and then across back into idle. So that's this lot here. Oh, this lot here even. Reloading, very, very similar. So it's any state across to reload empty with the reload trigger and the empty uh, bool parameter. Uh, and here we have bool parameter set to false. And then on completion, up to the base layer and then back to idle. So exactly the same. So yeah, it's quite a simple animated controller, but does the job quite, quite nicely. Uh, the other thing to be aware of here is that these actual animations are all stubs. Uh, they don't have any actual movement. This animator controller is intended to be shared across all of the different weapons. So in reality, you wouldn't use this one. You would actually have a separate one that had, for example, incremental reload options for your shotgun. Uh, it would have uh, punching and blocking for melee. It would have throwing and things like that in there. All stubs that you would override for the individual weapons. But just to demonstrate this, I kept it as simple as I could, really. But yeah, since the whole point of this split rig system is to share one set of arms between all of your different weapons, uh, in the end, you will need to make sure that your animator controller has stub animations for all of the different things that you want the arms to be able to do. As a bit of a faff, but unfortunately, that's just the trade-off of this setup. So let's have a look at the gun itself. So here we have the HQ FPS AKM. 
So this is a Neo FPS gun that's using their model. So this was actually put together using Neo FPS's firearm creation wizard. Uh, there was nothing out of the ordinary about that. It was just chuck it all in. The muzzle flash FX was just so just using a particle system. Where are we? Simple particle system muzzle effect. Uh, selecting the prefab that came with HQ FPS. I did do a couple of tweaks on it, just switching off play on awake and just some of the emission stuff uh, to make it kind of line up better. And also when it came to selecting things like the aim position, the muzzle tip, um, I just set those to not point at anything uh, so that they would create an object in under this components transform here, which I then positioned correctly after it created the weapon. Uh, so yeah, open them up in scene view and just made sure that these were in the right place. The only fiddly one really was these aim positions. So you can see from above that the uh, weapons are actually tilted in slightly towards the center of the camera view. So I just had to make sure that the aim points matched that. So the way I did that was by moving them out under uh, the weapon object here. Um, which is the actual model itself, resetting the rotations to zero, and then just making sure that the correct axes were pointing along the length of the gun by rotating uh, 90 degrees in each one until I hit that, and then dragged it back under the components here. So you can see it's actually got a bit of a rotation offset here, uh, and that's all that's required. The components um, object has these rotation offsets because actually in world orientation, it is facing Z forwards, X to the right. Uh, so this is world aligned, essentially. With the output of the wizard completed, uh, there are only two other things that we really need. So one of them here is the animator controller. So I'm using the exact same stub animator controller that we had previously, but I've just created uh, an animator override asset here. So this is a Unity animator controller. So create. Where are you? Animator override controller. So standard Unity stuff. And then just swapping the aim fire for the AKM equivalents. So you can see here. Boop. So this is HQ FPS, uh, meshes, equipment, assault rifles, FP underscore AKM. This contains all the different animations. So it's just matching them up name by name uh, to go here. And then this is the object they actually placed as the controller of this animator. I think HQ FPS, the original developer, had actually created their own version of Unity's animator override controllers, which had two options, one for the character, one for the weapon. Uh, I did it slightly differently here just because of my setup. So we have, we've created a Unity one to go on the weapon. And then on the weapon itself, if we go to the root, we have this component here, which is a, its own override thing. So this is called wieldable item body anim overrides. Bit of a mouthful, but it's a similar thing. All it does is it lists um, the different uh, animations on the character uh, using what's called a character profile. I covered this briefly in the uh, animator controllers video, but essentially what we do here is we create a uh, new FPS first person character animation profile it's the one and we would chuck in the stub animator controller which is this one here and then this gives you access to all of the different anim animation clips inside it and then this uh, animation profile you would just drag and drop in here and any that you chose to expose will appear in this list and you just pick the correct animations so here if we look at the Assault Rifles AKM folder, where we grab the animations from for the other override, we have this FP Arms AKM. So this is the animations for the arms themselves. So I've just dragged and dropped those in to match up. And what this does is when you select the weapon, the, uh, the watcher component on the character detects this object here and goes, cool, let me grab your animation overrides. Then it builds its own animator override controller and applies that to the arms. If this isn't detected, then the animator override controller on the arms will essentially be reset and they will just default to stub or default animations. Now the other component that we needed to add onto the uh, to the weapon here 
is this wieldable item kinematics. Um, now, if you remember from the full body character, this was what we used to match the hand positions and things like that. So here it's just set to none of the hands. We don't need the offsets because it's not doing that. All that this does is this tells the arms on the character uh, what transform to match to. So in this case, it's matching to the animator transform. Uh, because the animations for the hands are synced up uh, to the animations for the weapon, we want the position of them to match up as well. So that essentially all this does is send that transform across the character hands, and the character goes boom, matches that up each frame. So it's built into here. Um, in the future, I might split it out, or I might treat this site slightly differently. Uh, we'll see how it goes, or what feedback I get based on this bit. And that's most of the work required. So we're overriding the arm animations. We're matching the arm position. The only other thing that we need to do is to make sure that the weapon is triggering the correct animations on the character. And the way that we do this, if we look at the modular firearm script on the root of the weapon, uh, same goes for the melee weapon script, the thrown weapon script, and the wieldable tool script, is you'll find this animation section here. And the top property on this is animator location. Normally this defaults to attached only, so we're only sending animator parameters to the animator on the weapon. We want to set this to attached and character. So what this means is when we get any of these animator parameters like uh, equip or unequip or uh, fire the weapon or on the different uh, weapon move aimers, uh, things like the aim anim bull here, we want to send these to the character as well as to the weapon itself so it will sync up. And that's the way that you do that. Uh, one thing that's slightly different with this gun to some of the others is I do actually send an aim anim bull here in the weapon move aimer. And this is what's used to switch between the different, uh, if you remember, the hold idle um, and the aim fire versus fire, uh, just to make them more stable so it's easier to recover your aim when you're using them. Uh, the actual weapon positioning is still done procedurally, just as it is with Neo's demo weapons and things like that. Yeah, that's essentially everything that's required for the split rig. Uh, the fiddly thing is mainly just how the weapon model and things like that are set up um, in whatever asset you're choosing to use. For example, aligning your aim controllers and things like that. Yeah, we get, uh, we get some proper decent weapon behavior. We can switch between them. The arms all sync up and the animations all kind of match together. Everything works nicely like that. Normal reload. We've got the empty reload. Oop, jobs are good. So yeah, that's the end of the tutorial series. I hope the whole thing has been useful for you. Feel free to let me know what you think about it. If there's anything else that isn't quite clear or that you want more information on, we'll see what we can do. Otherwise, hop on over to the Discord, show us what you're working on, any questions you've got, things like that. Cool. I'll see you there.